Hi, this is Tim from Morial TV and Morial Radio here with James Jacob Prash. Uh, Jacob, one of the believers had an inquiry on who were the Quakers and was that a solid group? The Quakers were a group of people who followed a preacher in England known as George Fox. The Quakers were in many respects a reactionary movement against the mundane spiritual dryness and morbidity of the established churches and denominations, particularly the Church of England, of course, but not only the Church of England. George Fox was indeed a powerful speaker, a powerful preacher, and I do not deny that the early Quakers were believers. They were persecuted in England, but it was not an unprovoked, unprovoked persecution. They engaged in some rather outlandish practices. Uh, William Penn, the founder of the American state of Pennsylvania, his father was an admiral in the Royal Navy and a British aristocrat to whom the King of England actually owed money. Penn was able to secure the land, today what we know as the state of Pennsylvania and the city of Philadelphia and the area to the north, northwest and west of it as a colony, as a place of refuge for Quakers to practice their religion that had begun in Britain. The problem of the Quakers is a typical one. Experiential theology, charismania, again, the term I always use, neo-Montanism, those who fall into the trap of the Montanists in the early church. They stopped taking the scripture lit literally, and they had this idea, we don't need any structure. We have to be led by the Spirit. And they called the Holy Spirit the inner light. We have a witness. So they'd come into a meeting hall and just meet and sit around and wait for the Holy Spirit to say something, wait for a prophecy or a revelation or something of this nature. That's what they would do. But of course, a lot of the prophecies and revelations did not come from the Holy Spirit. It was the futility and deception of their own mind because they did not have a firm biblical basis. They began to negate things such as baptism and also the Lord's Supper, things that are ordinances the New Testament ordains, they did not practice. They preferred, have thy own way, Lord, we're just going to sit around, and if you tell us to take the Lord's Supper, we're going to do it. This kind of thing, which became way out of control. Out of control to the point where they began getting certain post-millennial ideas. And in areas of England, such as Buckinghamshire, not far from where I'm, I'm seated at the moment, maybe 40 minutes from where I'm speaking to you from, they were running naked, publicly running naked through the streets uh, because the kingdom had come. Resembling what happened in Munster in Germany with the prophets of Zwickau. Uh, again, a neo-Montanist Anabaptist sect that came about in, in, in Germany and Holland. These people were very similar to the IHOP Kansas City false prophets of Mike Bickle today. Very similar in what they were doing and what they were saying and, and what their praxis was. Things became absolutely out of control. In more recent times, the Quakers have gone into a purely social gospel, identifying it with left-wing pacifism and things of this nature, a kind of a quasi-political pacifism, which they represent as their brand of Christianity. Uh, they're still around, but not in the numbers they once were. I do not deny the personal faith of George Fox. I do not deny necessarily the personal faith of William Penn. But they did not have a biblically grounded faith. It was experiential. It became mystical. They mishandled the scriptures, then they ignored the scriptures. Sitting around just waiting for revelations, that became the word of God to them. Imagined prophecies, imagined words of knowledge, imagined revelations or words of wisdom. Think of the charismatic movement at its most extreme. Think of things like Toronto, Pensacola. Well, it was like that. None of these things are new. That's what the Quakers were. That's what the Quakers did.
the Society of Friends, they call themselves. My name is Jacob Prash. Thank you so much for your question. God bless. Blessings to your friends. Greetings of Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Prash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcast and our Vimeo clips and on YouTube deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering a, a, the questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website, moriel.org. But in this day of Kindle and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon and they're available through Kindle. Kindle. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. First being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea is an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The Dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast. Shadows of the Beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen, will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church Shadows of the Beast, the second book. And the final and latest one, Harpezo. Harpezo, what the scripture actually teaches about the rapture, the snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo, all available in the Memorial Catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless, and Jesus be with you. Thank <laughs> you.